Chen, and he will present uh, uh, non-climax optimization with long genuine through meta stability. Hi, you hear me? Okay. Everyone, this is joint work with Tengyun right here and my advisor, Maxim Ruginski. So our setting is one that you've seen many times before, including many times already this morning. We're interested in minimizing a non-convex subjective function in expectation, say the population risk, and we do this by using IED samples where the noise here, the ZIs, come from some unknown distribution. So there are many ways to do this, and as you've also heard this morning, one nice way is gradient descent or SGD plus noise for escaping local minima. So the Lantern algorithm adds isotropic Gaussian noise, and we can analyze it via this SDE, which you've also seen many times already this morning. It's nice because we know many of its properties, such as mixing time, stationary distribution, and so forth. So I'll briefly recap what we know so far about vanilla Langevin on non-convex objective functions. So last year, we have a local view and a global view last year. Zhang et al. showed that the Langevin algorithm will hit an approx epsilon approximate local minimum of the population risk in time polynomial in all parameters. And a complementary result was given by Riginski and friends, who showed that Langevin run long enough will eventually hit the reach the global optimum after a number of iterations that is, in worst case, exponential in dimension. And so that's all very nice and all, but naturally we want to know, you know what happens in all this intervening time. And so we'll show that you can choose your own adventure, so to speak. So we'll show that if you choose a short continuous time horizon, we'll call it T, you will hit an approximate local min quickly. Then if you wait around longer, you'll still be hovering around near there. If you wait long enough, you'll eventually transit out and be on your way to the basin of another local minimum. And this is a phenomenon known as in the physical sciences as metastability, this long lingering within the basin of some local minimum and fast transiting somewhere else. So these are the assumptions that we'll be working with before we get started. The first two are pretty standard. We want the functions to be twice differentiable and Lipschitz. The third one, the specificity essentially states that all of your critical points are bounded within a ball of a certain size, and there are many problems that satisfy this. For example, least squares with a quadratic regularizer. So our main result is as follows. First, pick your favorite local minimum. Call it W bar Z here. And initialize the Langevin algorithm at some distance R from it. Then define this recurrence time that is polynomial in everything, which is to say short, and this escape time that is arbitrarily longer than it. Then, with an appropriate choice of step size and the inverse temperature, with high probability, one of the following two things will happen we will either be epsilon far from the local min by the recurrence time, or be epsilon close to it from the recurrence time through the escape time. And so this is a streamlined but rigorous definition of metastability for the vanilla Langevin algorithm. It's characterized essentially by what we'll call fast recurrence and slow escape. So the proof of this has two main parts, and all the quantities here relate to the empirical risk. So the first part is describing how the diffusion behaves over a continuous time horizon. And the result is as follows. So initialize that some distance r from your local min, and for corresponding epsilon, 
diffusion will not exceed epsilon from the local min between the recurrence time and the escape time with high probability. And the way we show this is by first linearizing the diffusion around the local min and then decoupling it into a fluctuation term and a remainder term. After some nifty transformations, we obtain that the remainder term is nicely bounded via assumptions of smoothness and so forth. And the fluctuation term is parametric, and we can obtain from it a martingale whose maximal deviation is also bounded nicely in probability over any small time interval. Once we have this for any small time interval, we can, by union bound, extend it to an arbitrarily long time interval t. So the next part is transferring this result from the continuous time setting to the discrete time setting, because obviously our algorithm runs in discrete time. So the first step is to note that the algorithm iterates have the same joint distribution as the standard continuous time interpolation at the corresponding sample points, points of the mesh. This means that we can bound the total variation distance between these two via Gerson-Ov and by data processing inequality. And once we have that, we can choose a coupling between the algorithm iterates and the diffusion at the corresponding points such that their values are the same with high probability. And then once we have that, we can reason about the diffusion at those corresponding points instead of the algorithm module, the small probability that their values are different. And then it remains just to consider the behavior of the diffusion within these small time intervals. And we do that via Cromwell's lemma and by nice properties of Brownian motion. It's Gaussian bounded with nice tails, and that gives us our result. So how do we generalize this? We've been talking about ERM, but naturally we also want to talk about the population risk. And for this, we leverage some really nice work by Maybai and Modinari, who talk about the relationship between the empirical risk and the population risk. So they focus on functions that are so-called strongly Morris, which is a property that if the gradient is close to zero, then the curvature given by the minimum eigenvalue of the Hessian is bounded away from zero. And strong Morrisness is nice because it gives a very convenient correspondence between the risk landscapes of the empirical and population risk, and specifically a very close correspondence between the structure of the critical points. So our result is as follows. So assume everything we've been assuming, and additionally that the population risk is strongly Morse. Then the population risk of the local minimum is nicely bounded with respect to the minimum attained by the Langevin algorithm over the interval escape time, uh, recurrence time through escape time, with the penalty term that scales like square root of D over n log n. This happens with high probability, and if the algorithm does not hit an epsilon approximate local minimum by the recurrence time, then we, well, we should be considering another local min. And the way we show this is also mostly in two parts. First, we show that the empirical risk is as well strongly morphed with high probability. And we do this via uniform deviation guarantees provided by, made by Marnari, all scale with respect to square so root of D over n log n. Then the amount of adding in is subtracting out the population empirical risk at, and decomposing into these two terms, where the first term is controlled by the uniform deviation guarantees, and the second term we bound via standard tools and convex analysis given by Nesterov and friends. So to recap, we've talked about Langevin for non-convex functions, and we can show that via your choice of a continuous time horizon t, you can shape the metastability phenomenon that you want to see. Short one, you will reach a local min quickly. Longer one, you will be staying around there, and if you stop then, you will generalize well. Longer, you will eventually get out, and after enough transiting among these different basins, you will one day hit the, reach the global optimum. Okay, that's all I have. We have time for one question. If not, you can talk to the speaker uh, in the poster session, and uh, let's thank the speaker one more time. <laughs>